then the villain's in the tank probably a good 20 seconds or so before ripping it all in for 850. Ugh. <laughs> Welcome back to the vlog everyone, we're on day two of the Adelaide trip, about to head back to the same Royal Poker card room that we played at last night, ran pretty well in some um, high EV spots, let's say last night, hoping for more of the same tonight on a Saturday, let's not waste any more time, get in the action. So I get to the Royal Poker Club at about 8pm and hop into a game almost straight away. First few hands were playing shorthanded at 5-5, ended up buying into the game for 1000. Let's see if I can run it up. Let's go. So we're playing 5 handed to kick things off and then an unknown cutoff goes ahead and opens it up to 20. Loose aggressive button who I played with last night throws in the call. Then the actions on my big blind with Ace 8 of Diamonds. Could see either 3 betting or just calling here. Being that I don't know the cutoff that well, I really don't know if they're opening wide or not. So I just decide to throw in the call and take a flop with my suited ace. So we go 3 ways to a flop of 964 Rainbow with 1 Diamond. I check it over to the preflop aggressor who see bets 45. The button folds. Now the action's on me and pretty interesting decision whether we want to call or check raises a bluff here. I do think we have a lot of showdown value with ace high as well as a bunch of backdoor draws. But I don't want to just call though, just because I do think it's possible that the cutoff is just c-betting with like Jack-10 or Queen-Jack. And check raising here, we're going to deny equity to those hands and just take the pot down now, which is pretty fun. So I decide to go for it. I check raise it to 150. Then the cutoff doesn't think too long before throwing in the call. So we get to see a turn, which is the Ace of Spades. A very nice turn. We do turn top pair. Now, I don't think it's very likely we have the best hand here, but interesting whether c-betting is too thin or not. I think the opponent's going to have a bunch of hands that are open-ended straight draws on this board, over pairs, pocket tens through pocket kings, which we can potentially get value from, as well as 9x might call as well. Having said that, though, slight concern that they might have a hand like ace-king in their range or ace-queen, and then, you know, if they do start to fold some of those over pairs, we're kind of value-owning ourselves with a bet. But I'm not that concerned. I don't really think that Ace King and Ace Queen are going to be bet calling too, too often. So I go ahead and bet 200, looking to get a bit of value with my top pair. Then the cutoff doesn't think too long before throwing in the call. So we get to see a river, which is the Jack of Spades. Definitely not the best river in the world. The backdoor spades do get in, and my opponent can definitely have a lot of like 9x of spade type hands. And also, it's going to be a scare card if my opponent does have, you know, pocket tens, queens, or kings, as well as pocket jacks got there as well. Very interesting whether betting for value is too thin here or not, particularly when the SPR is less than one, like we're either going all in and checking it over to the opponent. And then, yeah, it's just a pretty interesting spot whether we're going to go for that thin value or not. I thought about it for maybe like 30 seconds, and I decided, look, if the opponent's got an overpair, they're just going to snap check it back and they might call. They might call a bet here when so many of the open-ended straight draws on the flops did miss. Sometimes we're just going to get stacked by pocket jacks or a backdoor flush, but that's poker for you sometimes. You've got to make EV when you go for these sim value spots and you get called. I decide to rip it all in and then the opponent snap calls, which is not what we wanted to see. I show my ace eight of diamonds and then they show two three of spades. So they had a gut shot on the flop on the turn with the flush draw. And then they got there on the river, and we paid them off for maximum with our thin value bet. Next hand under the gun is the same player from the previous hand, and I've now given them a loose aggressive label. They go ahead and open it up to 20, then a tight aggressive button calls, and I'm in the small blind with King Queen of Clubs. Absolute slam dunk three bet spot. I go ahead and make it 100. Under the gun calls, and the button folds. So we heads up to a flop of King 10 8 with two spades. So pretty good flop for us. We do make top pair after three betting. Interesting whether we want to see bet or not though. I'd like to see bet to get a bit of value here, but I definitely do want some strong hands like top pair in my check call range, particularly when I have labeled the opponent loose aggressive and I think they might stab the flop pretty wide. And I decide to put King Queen in that range in this instance. Wouldn't hate betting either though. I check it over to the villain and unfortunately they check back. So again, in say a turn, which is the Ten of Spades, completing the front door flush and pairing middle pair. Now, interesting whether I want to bet or not. The main reason I would like betting is basically to get paid off by any pocket pair that has one spade. But I also think this might be yet another spot to put a strong hand in my checking range. When I check twice, my opponent's probably going to be pretty likely to think I'm pretty weak in this spot and that I wouldn't have many top pairs. So I think they might 
bluff pretty aggressively, even with a hand like pocket six with, you know, no spade. They might turn a hand like that into a bluff when I have shown so much weakness. So I just like to check it over to them. And this time they do go ahead and bet. They go ahead and make it 70. So a very small bet, less than a third of the size of the pot. And I actually briefly considered check raising, just basically to try and charge any one pair hand with a spade. But I think that would be way too thin. My opponent definitely has a few tens in their range. So I just throw in the call here and we heads up to a river, which is the five of diamonds. So very happy not to see a spade. Now, I actually think this is a good spot to lead. I do think the fact that my opponent used a smaller bet size on the turn is indicative of that they do have some type of showdown value. We sort of wanted to go for a bit of equity denial on the turn when I did look so weak. Something like pocket nines or weaker king x makes a lot of sense to me. And I just think they're always going to check those hands back on this river. And I just want to go ahead and bet and try and get value from those hands since I think they're pretty likely to call since I'm going to have a lot of hands like Ace Jack with the Ace of Spades in my range, for example. So I go ahead and bet 200. Then the opponent calls pretty quickly. I turn over my King Queen and they show Queen 10 of Diamonds. So damn it, they turn trips and they're going to get us on yet another big hand. GG. So for this next one, we're still playing five-handed and a tight aggressive under the garden opens it for 20. Then I'm in the big blind with ace-10 offsuit. Could go with any three of the options here, but I decided to just call in this instance. So we're heads up to a flop of 10-4-3 with two hearts. So a pretty good flop for us, top pair plus the backdoor nut flush draw. I check it over to the opponent. They go ahead and see bet 20. Now, interesting whether I want to check raise or just call. I would definitely like check raising this hand at a pretty high frequency. However, I do think in this specific instance, the opponent is going to have a lot of like overcard ace-x hands, for example, ace-king, ace-queen, and ace-jack. I think they're probably going to use this type of bet size, and I don't want to blow them off those hands just because there's going to be a lot of implied odds for us hitting two pair. So I throw in the call, and we're still heads up to a turn, which is a beautiful one. It's the ace of spades putting out backdoor spades. Let's go. We do make out two pair. And I go ahead and check it over to the villain. Like I said, I think they're going to have a lot of ace king and ace queen. And I really want to check raise it to build a pot against those hands. So I check it over to them. They go ahead and bet 40. Now I'm going ahead with my plan. I check raise it to a 150. And the opponent tanks a little bit before throwing in the call. So it heads up to a river, which is the two of clubs. Absolutely beautiful river when all the flush draws miss. We're playing almost exactly one SPR, so I think I have a pretty obvious decision to rip it all in. Let's try and stack an ace king or an ace queen. Then my opponent is in the tank, probably a good 30 seconds or so before sighing and throwing in the call. I turn over my hand and they end up mucking, so let's go. We're going to rake in this pretty big pot here. The opponent later told me that they did have pocket kings, so very lucky for us to get there on the turn. Next hand, we finally get a new player at the table. So we're playing six-handed and then middle position. The new player goes ahead and open limbs and a tight aggressive button opens it up to 20. Then I'm in the big blind with a four, five of hearts and could see either calling or folding here. The main reason I'd consider folding is if I thought the middle position was gonna live re-raise ever. But being that we're playing live poker, that move is pretty rare and most people just live call. So I decided to throw in the call and then MP does call. So we're three ways to a flop of Jack-10 deuce with two hearts. So we do make a flush draw, albeit a pretty bad one. So I go ahead and check it over to the pre-flop aggressor, as does MP, and then the button checks. So we get to see a free turn, which is the two of diamonds pairing bottom pair. Now, I think this is a great spot for me to go ahead and lead, not only because I have a lot of equity with my flush draw and absolutely crap showdown value, actually the second nut low showdown value with five high, but I think we're going to be able to credibly represent a lot of 2x hands that is pretty unlikely the button will have. Maybe the MP will have a few more 2x um, as well, but I think we're going to have a lot and it's a good spot to go ahead and try and represent it with five high. So I go ahead and bet 50, then MP calls and the button folds. So we get to see a river, which is the queen of spades, no help to us. But in this spot, I usually don't like bluffing rivers with missed flush draws just because it blocks my opponent's combinations of missed flush draws that they're going to snap fold. But I think it's different when you have the nut low flush draw possible. My opponent's still going to have a bunch of ace high flush draws, a bunch of nine high flush draws that they're going to snap fold to a bet. So I can go ahead and try and put pressure on those hands by using this as one of my bluffing combinations. So I go ahead and bet 75. Then my opponent's in the tank maybe five seconds before raising it to 150. Yeah, so uh, we have five high. <laughs> we need to be good here 16% of the time, I think. 
five high is probably good 0% of the time. My opponent can definitely have 9-8 for a straight, queen jack, or even a 2x hand slow play the turn. So yeah, I think I just have to get out of the way with five high here. In all honesty, um, I don't like three bet bluffing either for just because my opponent does have two pair plus a bunch. So I end up putting this hand in the muck and nice try lee bets with a five high. Next up, I'm in the cutoff with pocket sixes. I raise it up to 15. Then I get a call from the small blind, who was the same villain from the previous hand, as well as the big blind. So we go three ways to a flop of 884, rainbow. The action checks to me, and I like C betting in this spot. We definitely are not going to be able to deny equity to a lot of overcard hands, but even if those hands do want to float, like ace jack, for example, then we're going to be more likely to get value from that hand now than we are on later streets. Same story with like pocket fives or forex. So I go ahead and bet 30, and then the small blind calls and the big blind folds. So it heads up to a turn, which is the queen of hearts, not the best turn in the world for us. When the opponent checks it over to me, I do consider betting for value again if my opponent turned heart draw. It's very likely they'll call, but I think most of the time, like their overcard floats are gonna fold unless they have a queen. And if we get called by a queen, that's bad, of course. Even pocket fives might fold to a bet here. So I decide to check it back and take the free river, which is the eight of clubs putting out the third eight. So we do have a full house now. When the opponent checks it over to me, I actually really want to bet now. I think even Ace X might call a bet because it does have showdown value as well as it's going to be hard pressed for someone to fold a full house on the river if i've learned anything playing poker that's a fact we can get value with pocket sixes here really the only hand i'm worried about losing to is pocket sevens or maybe an 8x is also somewhat possible that really wanted to slow play figuring i better full houses on the river but can't be too worried about that when there's a bunch of hands we can get value from so i go ahead and bet 80 then my opponent is in the tank and they start staring me down and shuffling their cards but eventually they land on a call i show my pocket sixes and then he shows king four offsuit so there you go he did river of full house as well and it's hard to fold full houses on the river so we did get him for a nice value bet there next up the same villain from the previous two hands limps in mp and then a tight aggressive small blind opens it up to 20 and i'm in the big blind with king four of clubs and I decide to call here. I discussed this a bit earlier, but I would like folding if I thought that MP was ever going to limp raise, but they've been limping a bit and I haven't seen them limp raise yet. So I throw in the call and then MP does call. So we're three ways to a flop of King Jack 7 Rainbow with one club. The small blind checks it over to me. And now I think this is a really good spot to go ahead and bet for value, basically to get called by all of the worst pairs on this board that might call now, but not necessarily on later streets. So I go ahead and bet 35 and then the MP calls as well as the small blind. So we're still three ways to a turn. The turn is the eight of clubs giving us a flash draw. Small blind checks it over to me. Now I'm in the tank, probably a good 10 seconds or considering if I want to bet or not. The reasons I would like checking here are we do lose to pretty much every King X that both the opponents going to have in their range with such a weak kicker and betting here might value on ourselves a bit. Additionally, some of the Jack X hands might to start to fold if I bet this straight again. So it could be a bit value ownage, but we do have a lot of equity here with our pair plus flush draw and it kind of just want to build a pot big when I do think the opponents might call with like Queen 10 or if they do call with a Jack X, we'll be getting a lot of value with so much equity. So I decide to go ahead and bet here. Might be a bit thin multi-way. Let me know what you think in the comments. I bet 100 and then MP calls and the small blind folds. So we're heads up to a river, which is the eight of diamond. So we don't get there with our flush draw. So I just go ahead and check it over to the villain, basically trying to induce a bluff from queen 10 or something like that. But then they check back really quickly. I show my king four and then he ends up throwing his hand in the mark. So Winning yet another pot, our luck started to turn around at least a little bit so far. Next hand, the under the gun player from the previous few hands, he goes ahead and limps again. And then the actions round to a new player on the button who goes ahead and raises it to 30. This player by their own admission had been out on the town on a Saturday night in Adelaide and had had a few adult beverages in them by their own admission. They go ahead and raise the button to 30. Then I'm in the small blind with pocket jacks. I go ahead and three bet it to 120. And then the under the gun player calls 120, as does the cutoff. So we're three ways to a flop of King King 3 with two spades. 
Now the actions on me, and I think this is a good spot to go ahead and check pocket jacks out of position to two opponents. And to be honest, I might consider checking all of my range here, even hand as strong as ace king or pocket kings. I think it's a good spot to go ahead and check it over to two different opponents who might go ahead and bet pocket pairs on this board. So that's what I do. I check it over to the under the gun, who checks it to the button, who goes ahead and bets 130. Now, with pocket jacks in this spot, I think it's a slam dunk, just call spot. I definitely think the chances that our hand's good is very, very likely. I think the opponent's going to be betting off with, like, pocket sixes through pocket tens, as well as a few bluffs, like ace-jack, for example. But I can't check raise because I do have to be concerned that they could have king x, being that they've got a few beverages in them, even if they had king ten off suit or, like, king six suited. I wouldn't be too shocked, to be honest. So I just throw in the call and then under the gun folds. So we get to see a turn, which is the three of diamonds, putting out backdoor diamonds and making it a double pair board now. Definitely going to go ahead and check it over to the villain again. Still somewhat concerned they have a king X and I don't want to overplay my pocket pair here. So I check it over to them. Then they go ahead and bet 200. So definitely starting to get more concerned that they can have a king X hand. Like I mentioned, I do think they have a lot of those in their range, but still don't think we can go anywhere with jacks here. There's still the front door flush that they could potentially be betting with, or even a bluffing hand like ace jack offsuit, for example, would make a bit of sense. Although maybe they check that with ace high, so still might have to be a bit concerned. Whatever the case, I did throw in the call in this instance, then we get to see a river, which is the ace of spades completing the front door flush. So definitely not the best card in the world. I go ahead and check it over to the villain. Then the villain's in the tank, probably a good 20 seconds or so before ripping it all in for 850. Ugh, absolutely gross spot here. We're getting 2.3 to one on a call. Do I think Pocket Jacks is good here 31% of the time? Well, it's pretty interesting because like I said, I do give my opponent a lot of King X combinations in their range, all the King Queen offsuit, all the Queen Jack offsuit, King 10 suited for sure, maybe King 10 offsuit. I just think they have a lot of Kings. And when I look at bluffing combinations, they would have to be turning a pocket pair like pocket sixes into a bluff, something like that. I really don't think that they're betting off a ace -X hand. I think that hand will probably take its showdown value concern that I played check call with a king twice. So I'm really not worried about an ace -X hand, but I just can't think of what hand they'd be bluffing with. It'd have to be something pretty unnatural. And in a spot like that, where we're not getting great odds on a call here, I think it might be a good spot to play it a bit more cautious and lay the hand down. So I end up folding my pocket jacks. The opponent asks if I want to see what they have and I'm at like, absolutely, yes, please, for the vlog. And then they end up mucking their hand anyway. So pretty good troll by them, but we're never going to know what they had. I think in the long run, folding pocket jacks here is a good play, mostly because we are going to have a bunch of ace -X and king X hands in our range as well that we can more easily defend with to the shove. So we're nearing the end of the night at this point and we're down to five players and under the gun goes ahead and opens it up to 15. Then I'm in the cutoff with ace 10 of diamonds. I three bet it to 50. We're playing over 1k effective, so I probably could use a larger three bet size. Maybe even 60 wouldn't be too large. Regardless, so I'm at 50 and then under the gun calls. So it heads up to a flop of 865 with two spades and one club. When the opponent checks it over to me, I'm probably not going to be c-betting this board that often as the three better, just because my opponent's going to have all the sets and a few straights as well on this board. When the strongest hands I'm going to have are over pairs, maybe pocket eights, and then the occasional combo draw, but just a good spot to check back with a lot of my range, including ace 10. So I check it, and then we get to see a free term, which is the ace of spades, completing the front door flush, but giving us top pair. When the opponent checks it over to me, definitely want to go ahead and bet for value here. I think my opponent's going to have a lot of hands like pocket nines or pocket tens with one spade, as well as a few like seven X hands that have an open end are that are probably going to call a bet here. I go ahead and make it 35. Again, I think this sizing is a bit too small. Probably could size it up to like 60 or 70. Whatever the case, I made it 35, and then the opponent throws in the call. So we're off to a river, which is the nine of clubs. Awful river, we do lose to any of those seven X hands as well as pocket nines now. So when the opponent checks it over to me, I think we have a pretty clear check back with ace 10 here. And then the opponent shows ace queen off suit with a queen of spades. So yep, very happy we didn't bet the river for value. That would have been way too thin. So we got one final hand before we wrap this thing up. And with the leniency we get at some of these card rooms, they allow us to do a double bob bomb pot. Let's go. We haven't played one of these in a minute on the vlog and super stoked to get this one. 
The one condition to this hand is it's a half pot bet limit. For whatever reason, they just don't want the betting to go too, too crazy. So the maximum you can bet is half of the pot rounded to the nearest five. So definitely important to note going forward in this hand. So we're in what would have been the big blind with a 9-4 offsuit, and then there's 125 in the pot, so 60 is the max bet limit, and we're gonna put both the flops out there on the screen. So pretty good for us, we do have two pair on the top board, although it is monotone, and then we have middle pair on the second board. When the small blind checks it over to me, I actually think this is a good spot to go ahead and bet, just because we're gonna try and get a lot of value from any hand that has the ace of spade X, which we're gonna be ahead of at least on one of the boards. And even if we are against a hand like a made flush, we do have a bit of showdown value on the second board. So the chances that we're like behind on both boards are pretty, pretty unlikely. So a good spot to go ahead and bet, in my opinion. I bet the maximum they'll let me, which is 60, and then only what would have been the under the gun player throws in the call. So it heads up to two different turns. The first one's the Jack of Hearts, and the second one's the Two of Clubs. So not a lot changes except for 6-5 did get there on the second board, but I definitely still want to go ahead and bet. I think the chances when my opponent didn't raise on the flop, the chances they have a made flush are pretty unlikely, and we just really want to try and get max value if they do have the ace of spades with like a pair on the second board, for example. Even ace of spades with a pair on the first board, we'd be pretty happy to get value from that hand. So I go ahead and bet the maximum they'll let me, which is 120. Then under the gun tanks, probably a good like 30 seconds to a minute before throwing in the call. So it still heads up to two different rivers. The first one, four of diamonds, let's go. We do make a full house on the first board. Not that I think we needed to, in all honesty. And then on the second board, it's the ace of diamonds. So it is a bit of concerning that the ace of diamonds did get there on the second board. I think the chances my opponent has top pair on that one is very, very likely. So we definitely wanna go ahead and bet, essentially to bluff my opponent off their equity on the second board, when the only pair they have is like an ace on the second board which beats our, you know, middle pair. And even if they do have like two pair on the second board, the river's kind of scary because they do lose 25X, for example. So good spot to bet the maximum they'll let me, which is only 240 in this instance, but still gonna go for it. And then under the gun, almost fold straight away. So very happy to rake in this pot. Definitely ran good to make a full house on the top board. Happy days. So there you go, those were the most interesting hands I played across this session. But in terms of how I feel about my play, I'm actually going to give myself an A grade for the session. Results didn't quite go my way, but I'm still overall very satisfied with how I played. I thought I was focused for the most part, paying attention to what my opponents were doing and making good adjustments to my strategy based on that. The most egregious hand I played probably was the King Queen of Clubs hand when I let out on the river. I don't necessarily think leading the river was a mistake. I just think betting 200 probably is a bit too large. I could probably bet something like 150 and give, you know, pocket nines a better price to call. But I really think that's the most egregious error. Overall, very satisfied with most of the decisions I made. Even the thin value bet on the river in the first hand with the Ace Eight of Diamonds. I still like that play and think I'm going to make EV in the long run against most opponents, betting for thin value like that. So overall, pretty happy with my performance. I think if I played like this every single session and ran much better than I did in this particular session, I'll probably do very well. So overall, happy with my performance. And for the first time in a long time, I'm going to give myself an A grade on a losing session. Hey, so we're back in the Airbnb at the moment. It's about 4 a.m. and we've just wrapped up the poker session for the evening. I only ended up playing just a bit over seven hours, but believe it or not, I'm still exhausted, even that after that shorter period of time. Was originally gonna to plan to go to the gym after the session, but I'm too tired for that. And hopefully I get a gym session in when I wake up tomorrow because I'm in desperate need of one, losing all my gains, we can't have that. Didn't run the best this session, ended up buying in for 3,000 and cashing out for 2,100. So pretty big loss on the session, but I've been running hot on the vlog lately. I was definitely due to have a loss at some point. That's gonna wrap up the vlog for today. If you haven't already, make sure you leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of these individual hand histories and hit that subscribe button so you get my next vlog from Adelaide when it comes out. But for now, I'm out of here. Peace.